Maker, if you use Photoshop Elements and you want to learn how to properly resize your product photos for Etsy using this software, this video is for you. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole, and I am a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product based business. If you don't know what resizing is, why it's important or what the recommendation is for Etsy, I suggest watching my recent video resizing images for Etsy 2023, and you can grab a link in the description below this video. Now I'm going to take you inside of Photoshop Elements and show you how to use my three-step process to properly resize your product photos for Etsy. So the first thing you're going to do is open your image inside of Photoshop Elements. I suggest using expert mode to do your edits. Step one of resizing is going to be cropping to the proper aspect ratio. So inside of Photoshop Elements, we're going to go over here to the left panel and we're going to select the crop tool. At the bottom, you are going to choose to do no restriction or custom because they do not have a preset for 4.3 or 5.4. So we're going to have to put this in ourselves. So we're going to do no restriction. Okay, so you're going to type in either a 4.3 or a 5.4 and you're going to hit enter. That is going to set your aspect ratio. Then we're going to move and you notice that I can't, it's set, that proportion is set at this point in time. Okay, so it's going to continue making adjustments based on that proportion. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to properly frame the photo in a way that I would like to. We'll go with that. Hit the check mark. Okay, so we've done step one. That's cropping to the proper aspect ratio. Now, the way that we're going to save this, there's multiple ways to actually resize and save inside of Photoshop elements, but there's kind of one direction you go when you're looking at saving for print, enlarging for print, and then another direction we go when we're going to be using these images on the web. So we're going to go up to file and we're going to go save for web. When that comes up, this is what you're going to see. We kind of have, we have our original photo over here. We have, this is set right now to a PNG. We've got all these different things, but we're going to focus first off. We're going to focus on step two. So you will notice now this was an image that came from the iPhone. So originally, and this right here is the size we're talking about pixel dimensions. Okay. And this is what they're saying. The original size is because that's what we're bringing in at this point. And we're going to make adjustments to the pixel dimensions, but you know, because I've taught you this, that the pixel dimensions that come from the iPhone are 4,032 by 3,024. So when we did step one and cropped out a portion of that image to properly frame it, we lost pixels because we removed pixels during cropping, but it still isn't enough to meet Etsy's recommendation. Okay. And Etsy's recommendation is 2000 pixels on the shortest side. So in this instance, we have more width than we do height. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change this height to 2000. Now you will notice that these dimensions are locked because we already set that aspect ratio when we went into crop. So if you uncheck this, these won't adhere to that aspect ratio. So we want to make sure that stays linked. And you'll notice when I go to put 2000 in the top width is automatically adjusting. And that's because we've already set the aspect ratio in cropping. So that's step two, adjusting our actual pixel dimensions. Step three is going to be reducing the file size. So we already, you know, we cropped the image that reduced pixels, which also removed data, which reduced our file size, but typically that isn't enough. So we have to do step three. You're going to want to choose JPEG. And what we will notice here is we have JPEG and we have it set to a maximum 100%. That makes our file size a 2.419 megabyte. So we're going to watch this number and we want to see if we go very high, that changes to an 80% quality and drops us to a one megabyte. That's still too much. Etsy says under a one. My recommendation is five to 700. 
So now we're going to go to a high, and that's going to be a 60% quality. And that does get us down to a 536.6 kilobytes, which is a good place, good place to be. So that was step three of resizing, reducing the file size with a quality reduction. Okay, so now we have that aspect ratio set to a 554. Five, we reduced our pixel dimensions to 2000 by 2500. We've reduced our file size to a 536 kilobyte file size. The extra step that you may want to take if you're using, utilizing Photoshop elements, and this isn't a resizing thing, it's just in the process of saving for the web, is to have this embed color profile checked. When you embed a color profile, that information, so the actual true colors of your, your product, your image, move with the photo in the metadata. Okay, This is beneficial because it helps your product be viewed true to real life online. The only downside to it is all these new devices, smartphones, tablets, even my MacBook Pro have all these display settings that alter the, the temperature, that alter the white point, that alter the true color of the display. So it isn't a foolproof method like it used to be. It's still good practices to have to make sure that your product is being viewed as true, true to real life as possible. It is an extra step you can take to ensure that. But just keep in mind that we have no control over how other people are setting their displays, whether that's a desktop, smartphone, tablet. And there are a lot of display features these days that, you know, remove the blue so that we can sleep better at night, which makes our screen very warm, reduces the white point. There's all different kinds of things that will adjust the true color of our product. But it's still a best practice to have this checked to make sure that we are, are doing the best job we can. Okay, so we're going to hit save. It's going to take us to wherever we want to save it. And we're good to go. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own high quality product photos. See you next time.